Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to our newest edition of uh, UC San Diego Extension Career Channel. We're excited to have you. This is, uh, we're in the middle of the pandemic. I'm not sure when you're watching this, but it's very interesting times right now. And um, the job market has just really collapsed in a way we've never seen it before. My guest today is Ray Major, who is the guru on data at Sandag here in San Diego County. And Ray, the thing that's really strikes me as differently about this is usually, you know, with the financial slowdown we had, it hit different industries at different times. So it felt like the, the economy collapsed over weeks or a couple of months, depending on the industry. This one it just went like it seemed like overnight. Quarantine, bam, businesses were shut down. Nobody traveled, airplanes, like, you know, is that what happened or does it just feel that way? No, that's actually what happened. Uh, you know, we were in a situation where we were in the longest expansion, longest economic expansion in history. And um, the San Diego region had 3.4% unemployment. Pretty much everyone who had a job, uh, who wanted a job, had a job. The economy was, was you know, firing on all eight cylinders. And overnight, we created a man-made recession, essentially. We shut down the economy. And that's never been done in the history of mankind. So you can go back as far as you want to. You could look at World War II. You could look at 9-11, at, uh, which shut down things for a couple of days, but, but not this unprecedented uh, length of time with all new rules uh, in place in terms of how you, you can engage uh, your customers. So this is truly unprecedented, and it uh, you know has shot the unemployment rate into the stratosphere, into an area where like one out of four, and some in some areas one out of three San Diegans right now is without a work. So Ray, let's go back to what you think the unemployment number will look like when we get it for the month of April or or May. Is the worst over? Will the worst numbers be in for the month of April? Do you think for San Diego County? Well, until they start opening the economy back up in earnest, and I don't mean just a, a few businesses to do pickup, but when we can actually start to open businesses up, uh, that will be the signal that people are going back to work and the unemployment rate is going to start to get better. So right now, I would imagine that for the next couple of weeks, as the unemployment claims continue to come in, that the the numbers are gonna get worse. I think we'll probably see unemployment in the area that they could hit as high as 30%. Wow, 3.4 to 30% is possible, wow. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, yeah. And let's talk about who got hit hardest in this, in this uh, recession. Last time it was white collar workers because it was financial uh, debacle, but not this time. Tell us the, the demographics that are hardest hit. So what we found when we, we did the analysis, and it's, it's pretty, it, it look, it's obvious when you, when you think about it, or it's intuitive when you think about it, but the areas that really got hit are those that require high touch or high interaction between human beings. And so it's the industries like the retail industry, the hospitality industry, the uh, entertainment industry, things like SeaWorld and the zoo fall into those categories. It's hospitals, it's transportation workers, whether it's an Uber driver or an airline pilot who got hit. And so uh, it's miscellaneous services, it's things like nail salons and gyms, et cetera, where people are in close contact with each other. They were disproportionately hit because their jobs can't be done without actually being in physical contact with another human being. And we're starting to see a uh, pickup from restaurants. We're starting to see things to come to life. As you said, no major uh, changes yet for non-essential. <clears throat> what should we expect over the next four to six weeks? Just a slow, if we were at 30%, it'll, if we had weekly numbers, it'd be 28, 26, 24. I mean, we're not going back to 3.4 for a long time, do you think? I, and I don't know that we'll, we'll get there in the foreseeable future either for a lot of reasons that we can discuss later if you'd like. But um, in terms of, of what I see, first, I would see a flattening of that curve. So it would stop at somewhere around 30 percent. There are a lot of people who are um, eligible for unemployment who haven't applied yet or couldn't get through because the phone lines were 
um, you know, too busy. And so you're going to see some of these lagging claims come in also. So for the next couple of, of weeks, I would expect the numbers to get worse until people are actually going back to work in, in large numbers. And I don't think we're going to see that for the next couple of weeks because the governor's orders are pretty strict in terms of, of his criteria for allowing businesses to start to open uh, in, in mass again. But when we get to what he's calling the end of uh, phase two or into uh, phase three, I think that's when you're gonna start to see the unemployment numbers uh, and, and claims go turn in the other direction. Why will we not shoot right back to 3.4 within two months and life goes on at full employment for another 10 years? Well, in, in order for us to, to shoot back out of it with a V-shaped recovery, all go back to work and stay-at-home orders would have to be lifted completely and we'd have to go back to the way it was. And there are certain sectors of the economy where it's becoming obvious that they will not be going back to anything close to normal uh, for the foreseeable future. We haven't even figured out how to make certain sectors of the economy come back at all. And so those people will not be coming back to work. So the, there's a flattening of that V-shaped curve you're talking about. And it probably looks something more like a long V or it looks like a, um, a, a check mark kind of where um, as soon as the economy opens up, a lot of people are going to go back to work. But there will be industries or, or sectors within the economy that will need to completely restructure and may look uh, unrecognizable to us, uh, you know, given what we're, we're historically used to. And that might be 82,000 seat stadium or 42,000 seat Petco Park cruise ships, I mean, for example, that we may Those never see that Examples like again. that, air travel in terms of, uh, you know, right now people would get on an airplane and go on vacation and the cost was reasonable. If you need to do social distancing on an airplane, then those the cost of that middle seat is going to be borne by the customers who are sitting on either side of it. And so you're not going to be going on vacation as much. That changes the tourism industry. You have places like like SeaWorld and the zoo where uh, you're going to have to have probably uh, directional paths where people are instead of bumping into each other, everyone's kind of walking in the same direction. Um, you know, restaurants uh, probably won't be able to stay in business at 50 percent capacity if they have to have social distancing and six feet uh, table six feet apart, especially the, the higher end ones down in downtown uh, in Little Italy. You're not th those restaurants cannot be profitable if you tell them that they can only serve a third to a half of their customers for a considerable amount of time. And so these industries are going to significantly change. You know, the one thing that we can uh, hope for is a vaccine that completely wipes this out, makes this go away, and then we can go back to what would be normal. But until that happens, um, there are some industries that do not know how to respond. Or, or it, and it's not that they don't know how, it's like this is unprecedented. They're, the rules haven't been written in terms of how to respond. You know, you look at office buildings, too. How do you get people into an office building when you have to share the elevator with people from different floors? You know, they're, they, they're, they're talking about using thermal uh, uh, thermometers, but those are on such back order that we may not be able to have them for 18 months to two years. What happens then? Nobody can go into an office building. I mean, this is fundamentally going to make it difficult for the economy to get back to where it was just two months ago. And so what would you... If you're in the tourism business um, or worked at football stadiums or baseball stadiums, which are going to be very slow to come back, this is the time to pivot your career, right? Don't sit back and wait for football to come back and for a stadium to hold 85,000 because a vaccine came up. Because part of it is our, our comfort level as consumers, right? I would get on an airplane right now, but my wife is doesn't want to get on an airplane pretty much till a vaccine starts up. So um, how do we read the public and how quickly they be develop confidence in going in an elevator or are allowed to go up in an elevator? How is there a way we can sort of read our confidence level to, to see what industries might come back quicker? Well, I, I think that the industries that are going to come back quicker are the ones that can provide that safe workspace for their their people. So a lot of the office buildings or even the high-tech, biotech, manufacturing, they're, they're going to be able to 
to pivot relatively easily. They'll, they'll put some new rules into place in terms of, of how close workers can be. But I, I think that th that's very doable. The, the ones that are going to be more difficult are the ones where um, you have actual patrons or, or, or people who, who you're serving, if, if that makes sense. So like in the airline industry, you know, how do you get through uh, TSA and onto the airplane? And how do you check to make sure that nobody's sick in that in that queue, I don't, I don't know yet how that's going to be done. So th those, those are where the harder problems are to solve. The tourism industry is particularly hard hit. Um, you, you sort of mentioned that when you said ballparks, um, anything related to tourism, whether it's a hotel, a motel, it's the retail that's around uh, the downtown or the, the, the anywhere along the coast, the restaurants that are associated with that, they're going to be the, the hardest hit because the people who patronize those are local people, obviously, but in a large part, it's the tourist industry. It's people who are coming either on vacation to San Diego there's a, or they're coming here for business. And we will lose both business travelers and uh, people who are coming here for, for leisure. So my prediction is that we will be in a recession. I don't think that would surprise anybody, but it hasn't officially been called yet. Um, but this recession is going to be particularly difficult for San Diego to get out of. And it will require a fundamental restructuring of our economy the same way when we lost all of our um, airplane manufacturing, for instance, back in the 80s when, when um, we used to have General Dynamics and a lot of big manufacturers, uh, you know, when they left, uh, there was a fundamental restructuring of our economy. And, and the, you know, the three industries that drive our economy are tourism, the innovation sector and the military. Well, the military is not going anywhere, so that's good news. Biotech will probably be able to rebound without a, a, a lot of problems. Most of those people, all, uh, you know, who are working in labs already have the PPE that they would they, they would need, and so uh, there'll, there'll be additional rules, but they'll bounce back. But it, it really is that that tourism sector that that provided a lot of the entry level jobs for people. Uh, kids who came out of high school or people working their way through college, those are the jobs that will be much harder to get. So picking up you know, summer work as a, a waiter or a waitress is, is not going to be as simple as it was uh, in, in the past years. Yeah. Uh, and another adjunct to that is we're hearing stories about college graduates that had a job offer in the February, early March timeframe and got rescinded. Right. I mean, how disappointing that you sort of lost graduation, you've lost your last semester and now your job's been rescinded. So now you're you're uh, even without a job. Let me let's let's fantasize, Ray, if you were president, secretary of commerce and secretary of treasury rolled into one. What would you do? What would you recommend that well, Washington or Sacramento or the mayor of San Diego do to reasonably um, alleviate this pain? Well, I, I think um, for, for one, we should really reopen the economy as fast as we can, still having um, a, a level of safety provided to the people. Um, the problem is that this is going to take an incredible toll on not only the local economy, but but the state and, and national economy, and in some cases, the, the, the global economy, if we continue to be shut down. So finding that vaccine uh, has to really be job one, because that is that is the uh, the silver bullet for getting everybody back to work. Um, but with, with that said, I would be, um, I would allow businesses to open up again um, with a set of guidelines that was clear and um, ones that were actionable. So to, for instance, to, to insist that everyone have the, the thermal thermometers to check the patrons as they come into a restaurant is, is, is not doable because you can't get the thermal uh, uh, thermometer. So, so what can you do? Is it, is it okay if you, um, you know, serve families together? Uh, you know, I mean, you gotta come up with some, some, some rules. And um, I think that in that case, you could get most of the economy to to start to come back. The, you know, the the Great Recession took us ten years to recover from. 
Um, 9-11 took us three years for the travel industry to come back, but eventually it did. And, you know, we will come back from this. We will figure out how to do business. I mean, we still take our shoes off when we get on an airplane. Um, you know, that's been almost 20 years now that, that, that we've been doing that type of thing. So it'll be a new world order, but I think the businesses need to be allowed to open because right now you think about it, a third of our residents cannot provide for their families with the job that they were doing just two months ago because we're, 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 pro, we're telling them they cannot go to work. So, so we have to do something about that. Um, nail salons, for instance, are, are, are another one. Um, is, it, is it possible to, to protect, uh, you know, if, if the, the person doing the nails is wearing a mask and gloves, is that enough protection to allow a client to get their nails done if the, if the client is also wearing a mask, right? We, we have to come up with some kind of rules to allow some of these smaller businesses to open to. Yeah, and it's going to be a shame to see how many small businesses, especially restaurants, don't survive this, that they just sort of give up because it's such a low margin business to start with. And then to think about only six feet distance and I've got a small restaurant, that means only five people can be in it. I can't open and have five five clients is all I've got. So, Ray, you're Mr. Data of San Diego County, right? Every every survey, every demographic thing is, is Ray Major at Sandag. What data do you need? What what do we need to find that people will be comfortable? That's a that's a, a very difficult question. I, I think that you know when you're looking at that type of data, you really need to understand uh, more about the the COVID nineteen disease and how it or virus and how it actually transmits. Because until we understand that, we we really don't know whether or not. You know, a mask covering. It used to be that N95 was was the only way that, that you would be able to be, uh, you know, in, in contact with anybody. But now it's okay if you just wear a cloth over your your mouth and nose. And so we really have to understand the method of transmission and and figure out uh, how to take care of it, that data. But in in terms of understanding, you know, the economy, I'm I'm not a doctor. I'm an economist. You know, when I look at it, I, I need more information on really. Who has lost their job and what kind of businesses have been impacted? Which restaurants are closed now? Which ones are open? What are the restaurants that are open doing that, that are, you know, and, and are they being, are they profitable? Or are they just barely getting along? That type of information would, would help us devise a plan, at least to understand how, how to reopen the economy. Uh, right, right now, there really is, there's is not a lot of data out there that allows us to make uh, fully informed decisions because we don't know how badly we're hurting different sectors of, of the economy. Well, and I think a lot of this is the psyche of people. We can have all the numbers in the world and know the percent of this and the percent of that, but it's the it's the sort of the psyche of the consumer and the residents of, of San Diego, in our case, of what makes them comfortable, what makes enough people comfortable to jumpstart a certain restaurant, you know. The demographics of younger people go to sports bars before families go to fast food restaurants, you know, those sort of things. And, and who knows? I mean, that takes a psychologist and getting into our brains. And I think each one of us sort of one day feels really comfortable and cocky. And the next day goes, well, no, I, maybe I was 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 too uh, too confident in that thing. So it's going to be very interesting to watch this thing peel out over the next six months it will be and you know as a as a as a data analyst you know you look at the data that that comes from different parts of the globe and 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 some of it is not um it is not as accurate as it should be and that makes it even more difficult for us to really understand where it started when it started the transmission um what the cycle would look like so um you know if if we could get uh open and honest uh, data, especially from, from China, where it's, this has been uh, going on the longest, we'd have a better understanding of, of what we're in for right now. Ray, is there anything our audience ought to know that we haven't asked you? Well, I think you had mentioned something earlier that we, we didn't really uh, answer the question, and, and that is, you know, should people be looking at, at different things to do? And I think this would be a, a really good time to try to um, look into other careers or, or have something as a backup, because um, if you were in the industries that we talked about at the beginning of this, like you were in retail or anything to do with, with the tourism industry, um, you know, imagine if they only hire back 
50 to 75 percent of the people in the next year, for instance? Where does that leave the, the other people who are working in that industry? And um, those those people will have to be either retrained or find jobs in, in other uh, industries. So I think that, that that would be the the biggest word of advice that I would give anybody right now is that just because there was a job at a at a restaurant that you may have left or or you were working at a retail, th- that may not be there. I mean, you see businesses like Nordstrom closing down um, their their locations, for instance, the one in North County. Um, just they just announced that they were closing. Those jobs will be lost. The, the retail jobs there will be permanently lost in the region. Yeah. No, and, and a couple of thoughts to keep in mind during this time when, when you're quarantined is if you didn't like the job you were furloughed or left before, don't sit home anxious to go back because you're going to walk in the first day and go, I hated this job before. Why didn't I make a change then? Right. So if you didn't like your job before, this is the time to use the time to find a new career path for yourself. Number two, if if you're an A player at your company, you're going to be called back first. If you're a B player, you'll be called back second. In your mind, if you're a C player or less, you probably won't be called back. So the reality, whether you liked your job or didn't like it, make that change. Because you don't want to sit at home for three months and then find out you're not being called back to your old job. And then number three, be a better employee when you do go back. You have plenty of time to do online learning, learn new software, learn new skills. Call your, your boss and say, what skills should I pick up so that when we come back, hint, hint, bring me back, um, I'm a better employee. And you'll be surprised how they'll tick off two or three things that will make you better and you have good use of your time and be a better employee when you when you come back. Ray, I, I wish we were talking more upbeat. Hopefully we'll have you back on the on the show talking about the fast turnaround and how we were all surprised how fast it turned around. I don't think we need to hold our breath for that show quite yet. But it's important to know the reality of what's going on out there and the number of Americans that are um, they're unemployed. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, We need to understand the good news and we need to understand the bad news. But mostly what we need to do is understand what it means to us and our families and our careers and what we need to do about it. As I always say, we all have a career coach and it's us. We need to take a responsibility for our own career and the success of that career. So think about where, what industry you're in, where you'll be going back to if you're asked back and what you ought to be doing now for to prepare for the new normal. Thank you for joining us at UC California Extension Career Channel Job One, and we'll be back with you in a few weeks. Thank you. Thank you.